you assume your role in the plan of God and in the ordination of God. Welcome, my dear, my dear friends, for this third day of our retreat and my third presentation of my reflections. And I like to begin this uh, presentation on this day with a quote. Where I am taking the quote from, you should be knowing, but still, I will give the full quote eventually. But I like to begin with that quote. We commit ourselves under the impulse of the Holy Spirit in progressing, to progressing in terms of understanding of the gospel of Jesus. It's a progress, a better understanding, a deeper commitment to the demands and to the inspiration, invitation and the challenge of the gospel. We commit ourselves to a, make a progress in understanding the gospel not only understanding, but living the gospel. Do you know where I took this particular sentence from? I was highly captivated by this particular sentence. Because as a part of my preparation for this presentation, I also got some of the Franciscan sources. Your chapter statues or province chapter statues or the, what do you call it, province chapter declaration documents. Also the constitutions of the Capuchin Friars Minor and there I have taken from page number 
page number 41 and the very article number one our life according to the gospel today on the third day I am going to focus on gospel analysis in a way Jesus analysis because I was highly taken up by the constitution and uh, this is a redacted and updated constitution of the Capuchin Friars Minor of the Second Vatican Council and I, I read the history they are taking years together and uh, close to about two decades to put it in a new drafting as per the invitation given by the Second Vatican Council but well written my appreciation to all those who contributed to the drafting of this constitution but I like to read in full the number one article number one the very first uh, page I should read it to you just for our memory I know you know it but still we should know it in certain depth for which the reading will help us as a prelude to our third day that is gospel analysis the holy gospel of our lord christ jesus is the source of our entire life of the holy church in every age and the message of salvation for the whole world in fact the church led by the holy spirit comes to know christ jesus through the gospel and with faith the church accepts jesus deeds and his words which are the spirit and the life for those who believe well said well said well said i like it which are the spirit and the life for those who believe that means our spirit our breathing our life that is being living and witnessing saint francis the founder of our brotherhood embraced the gospel from the very beginning of his conversion and made it the guiding principle of his very life and his noble activity for this reason at the beginning and the end of the rule he expressly commanded the observance of the gospel and in the testament confirmed that it has been revealed to him that he must live according to the pattern of the holy gospel since we are his sons i am including myself too since we are his sons we commit ourselves under the guidance of the holy spirit to make continuous progress in understanding the gospel i like to add not only understanding but living the gospel a continuous progress my dear friends today we are going to focus as i said earlier on the gospel analysis as the very number one of the article number one of the chapter number one says we need to have a continuous progress i'm going to place before you within this short period of time 40 45 minutes the continuous progress in understanding the gospel i suppose you know and certainly you should be knowing but still i can recollect the fact there were about 61 gospels recognized by the Christianity, including Catholic Church. Out of 61, four gospels are chosen. And we know Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But today our prayer should be that you and I become fifth gospel. Four gospels for reading. Fifth gospel for realizing and reflecting and radiating. At the end of this day, the third day of our retreat, we should become a living gospel. Matthew may end the gospel with 28 chapters. Mark will end it with 16 chapters. Luke will end it with 24 chapters. Or John will end it 20, 21 chapters. But we have to write a sentence each day and every day. We should be a kind of an ongoing gospel process. It is there, it is said, Francis of Assisi, in the testament, he confirmed that he must live as by the pattern of the gospel. Now look at the way I am now elaborating my four points ending with a grace. With this prelude, with this introductory talk, I am immediately moving into highlight number one. What is that one? See, when we say gospel, good news, good news is nothing but good values. Good values are nothing but God values. God values are nothing but the reign of God, God's reign, God's kingdom. 
going by chapter number 6 Matthew's gospel going by chapter 11 Luke's gospel when we are asked to pray father in heaven holy be your name thy kingdom come what is that one thy values come when the values come kingdom comes reign of God comes so gospel is nothing but God values good values good news good values good values God values when the values come God himself reigns reign of God when the, uh, thy kingdom come thy reign come thy values come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so that's the thing that's the first highlight what is that one the first value of the gospel you know it but I have to say it very emphatically why Jesus himself says John's gospel chapter 18 on this question there was a certain discourse between Pilate and uh, Jesus Pilate asked Jesus are you a king Jesus did not give a straight answer he says you say it or somebody told you and then Pilate says I am coming from elsewhere Rome so I am being told I am asking you when Jesus did not answer exactly now Pilate moves to second question then what's your kingdom and Jesus says my kingdom is different from your kingdom what does it mean you said what uh, you remember what I said little earlier my values are different from your values your values are going by the empire of Rome and you are not expanding what you call you want to extend your what you call Roman Empire suppress the local people and absorb and take away appropriate the local resources that's a value you have got whereas my values are different and when Pilate asked me again Jesus said look at the sentence I come to bear witness to truth I was born for truth I lived for truth he did not say the next sentence I am prepared to die for truth but he said another sentence those who accepted me they walk in truth John's gospel it is put truth but as per the biblical scholars which the church has now accepted going by other gospels namely Matthew Mark and Luke or other gospels which are recognized though not canonically uh, put into the order of the Holy Bible they have gone for another word justice John's gospel John in language truth the rest justice why what is true is just what is just is true so even now Pope Francis highlighting on that one justice that's the value number one and going by our constitution that's the understanding we need to have clearly namely when I stand for truth I stand for the gospel if the truth is absent in my life that means justice is absent in my life another prophetic language is righteousness is absent in my life God is absent I may read the book, uh, by gospel I may even preach about gospel but I am not a fifth gospel living gospel Shall I now quote here somebody who said like this? You will guess by the time I finish the quotation. Somebody said like that. I come from another religion where God is truth, God is Dharma. As per Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, I am Dharma, I am justice, I am truth. When the Adharma comes up, I will take Avadhar. And tells Arjuna, wage war against Adharma. Gaze upon me. With all looking for immediate proofs, Nishkama Karma. Do what you are expected to do for truth. Because I am truth. Lord Krishna. This particular gentleman whom I am now quoting, by now you would have guessed. He said, I come from that religion, Hinduism. I know the discourse between Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Then I read the gospel, discourse between Lord Jesus and Pilate. 
Gospel of John chapter 18 verses 32 and following. Look at this one. This man, the great man, is a Maha man. Now you know Mahatma Gandhiji said. I like this one. Though I come from that religion. I thought God is truth. But Jesus gives another revelation. Truth is God. When I stand for truth, I stand for God. When I stand for justice, I stand for God. So easy to say, I go by God. I go by gospel. No, no, it is rather tough and rough to go by the value of the gospel of Jesus. And it is there, the number one says, we come to know Christ Jesus only through gospel. Because he lived the gospel. He is not only promulgated justice, not only promulgated righteousness, not only promulgated the truth, he practiced in his very life, day in and day out. Come what may. Come what may. He was ready even to carry the cross for truth, justice. Amos, book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 22-24 would say, certainly you know it. And let me now recollect those words. God abhors your burnt offerings. God dislikes your sacrifices of animals and others. Stop chanting. Let justice first and foremost flow like a stream. Let righteousness run like a river. First is that. Then God will accept your sacrifices. Otherwise the sacrifices will be humbuck. 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 It is there we need to have that understanding of the gospel. Value. Justice. When we think of justice, there is a big topic. I am not going to elaborate. But I have to indicate some of the dimensions of justice. Social justice. That is gender justice. Economic justice. Political justice. Cultural justice. Religious justice, you have to respect other religions. Ideological justice. All the six put together, social, economic, political, cultural, religious, ideological. That is called societal justice. You remember yesterday, we had societal analysis. So we criticize the society in terms of corruption, communism, what not. But now we have to know, conversion should take place in terms of the society. To begin with me, in terms of this. Justice. I tell you these six are known as societal. Yesterday we also had it. The last presentation. Cosmic analysis. And there comes another one. Animal justice. Plant justice. It's there the doctor uh, APJ Abdul Kalam used to say. When you cut a tree, plant two trees. That is called plant justice. Plant balance. Another one is the, the, among this cosmic justice, animal justice, plant justice, environmental justice. Fourth one is universal justice. So six, societal justice. Four, cosmic justice. Put together ten dimensions. So justice looks rather simple. But ten dimensions Another way of putting 10 demands. I don't know where all this uh, were learnt by Francis. Because about 700, 800 years we talk this language. A cosmic uh, understanding added. So when he said uh, better understanding, continuous progress in understanding the gospel, he did it. We need to deal with clap for uh, our hands for Francis of Assisi. Mm. He did not attend this retreat, but he talked that one earlier. Comes the same, the next, the next highlight, the second highlight. What is that one? Freedom. That is called human rights. St. Paul in the letter to the Romans, chapter 5, will say, chapter 5, letter of St. Paul to Romans. You can read the whole chapter, but there the, the essence of that chapter is this one. God has given us freedom that even we could commit sin. No freedom is given by God of creation. No possibility of committing sin. But at the time we won't be humans. We will be machines. Like switching on, switching off. We put on the light. And put off the light. Light does not know. 
it has no freedom whatsoever it follows the operation done by us the same way we also could have been like missions and we would have not been the human beings but god look at the sentence god in all his freedom created humans with freedom why god also has got his own freedom he could have created humans with two, with his freedom he could have also created humans with own freedom that is his freedom but he went for the first option no no i will create a human beings with freedom because of the freedom given to us we commit mistakes we fail in our task and responsibility and we find ourselves lacking and wanting in grace we become even disgrace as i put yesterday even scandalous in every respect personally congregationally uh, ecclesially socially societally cosmically because of freedom in the chapter number 7 the same letter to romans saint paul would say verses 13 onward you can read 13 verse number 13 because that's the way i like he says i like to do certain things but which i am not doing but there are certain things which i don't want to do precisely those things i do there's a tension there's a pull and the push is part of human life why because of the freedom freedom is given by god almighty is a big gift we need to thank god for the gift of freedom even though we make mistakes and commit sins because of the freedom that is granted to us but still still we need to really enjoy our freedom so that we can be kind of what we call mature adult humans we are not a little ones or the small ones we are not chota ones but we are bada ones then means we need to use our buddhi use our wisdom and exercise our freedom in a responsible way look at the other side of the coin i need to have my rights as saint in the other side of the coin is i need to respect the rights of others i have no right whatsoever to violate the human rights of others i give an example you would not have expected this example to be given at this particular juncture but i don't mind giving it what is that one christianity especially catholic church is against abortion on this issue because of this issue even the man happens to be the father even the woman happens to be the mother once they got the once the sperm and the ovum got copulated zygote formation conception has taken place and that has become another individual the parents the father and mother individual or collectively they have no freedom to eliminate the fetus in the womb that particular fetus it will be delivered only after 9 months but still the fetus has its own right and it has its own freedom free to live free to live it is the catholic church has taken very strong an emphatic stand against abortion this is a typical example typical example i just wanted to give to you you know the detail however now comes the challenge i need to enjoy and experience and express express and exhibit i am using four e's enjoy experience express exhibit the freedom that i have got in doing good if not better and best at the same time i should also others to again to enjoy express experience exhibit is right her right and especially going by franciscan charism in the rights of the people who are who are pushed to the periphery of the society and periphery of geography that's what social science says the social scientists say uh, scientists say when you use the word periphery it is not only sociological periphery also geographical periphery 
and we need to have that we have to stand for the freedom and the rights good and uh, yeah, that is the freedom now we have uh, come to the second one the third one is love that's the value of love I'm, what I am going to say, not that you do not know, but we have to know it yeah, exactly. What is that one? Jesus came only 2000 years ago. Homo sapiens, going by the evolution of Charles Darwin, which we have accepted, science. Science we have accepted, evolution. Going by book of Genesis is a creation. But creation through evolution, science. This is scripture, that is science. Who said that one? Pope John Paul II. He said, the science is not against scripture. But we have to synthesize scripture and science. So creation by God through evolution, that is science. Now going with the evolution theory. Evolution theory of 1858. That is Charles Darwin. So we are living at a time when we have accepted the science as a matter of fact. Or a uh, declaration of truth, scientific truth. So truth coming from science. Look at the detail. Jesus came only 2000 years ago. But Homo sapiens were there at least plus or minus 45,000 years. Homo sapiens. That means from the Homo sapiens, the hum human species, from 45,000 years from our time, Jesus only 2000. Calculate 43,000 of years humanity survived because of the value called love. If there is no love, humanity will not survive. Even sexual love. The love between a man and woman and then afterwards when they become parents, parental love, familial love, societal love. So love was there 43,000 years. Now, this is the way I want to know, uh, uh, put the matter across to you, going with the number one of this constitution, a kind of a progress in understanding the gospel. Possibly you know, but better we know exactly today. So that when we spend this third day of our retreat, we really commit ourselves to the gospel mission and in terms of these values. And the love, when Jesus said love, if you now go into all the gospels, as for the biblical scholars, I am not a biblical scholar. But I keep up the biblical scholarship. As for the biblical scholars, when Jesus said, referred to the value of love, he made two special demands of the value of love. What are they? First one, love your enemies. Something special. The 43,000 years, they talked about love of the neighbor, love of others, love of this and love of that. But then really Jesus came. With a very challenging note. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Now the biblical translators, translators go by a new translation. Uh, though Jesus himself referred to, in a way, enemies. But whenever we think of enemies, no, we think of Pakistan, for example, or China, or Osama. Enemies are far away. So today, biblical scholars suggest I'm sorry, biblical translators suggest instead of enemies, better to put a very practical note and that is called love the wrongdoers who did wrong to you. That means it can be in a, even in your own community. Look at the way I'm now putting it across, contextualizing it. It can be even in our own province, in our own uh, Franciscan Capuchin uh, community. And we cannot deny the fact. Because we are humans. It's part of the deal. Not everything will go by goodwill. Certain times things may go by ill will. Certain times even intentionally. Many a time we thought intentionally. But today is a challenge. I had to live the gospel. I had to love the wrongdoers to me. Pope Francis, in the Fatuli Tuthi, there is a section on this one. He puts that uh, we may not be able to forget the wrong done by others, but still we should forgive. 
generally we say forget and forgive possibly you also said it when people came for counseling even at the confessional we say forget forgive forget forgive we know both are not possible better to go by what is possible leave aside what is not possible forgetting not possible why memory is there we cannot easily erase the memory the wrong word he uttered the wrong gesture that he extended or a kind of a humiliating or belittling uh, the word or the deed that he showed to me i may not able to forget accept the fact so i cannot erase the memory accept the fact but still we can forgive that's called loving the wrong doers that's a special one in psychology that is called melting love melting love melting love means you love the wrong doer in course of time he or she melts if you harden it and the hatred also will get further confirmed and strengthened maintained if not sustained so you loving the enemy or loving the wrong doer the person gets melted if not today tomorrow if not in course of time the person accepts you very special love you have to really thank jesus for giving us this special special note love the enemies i have given the explanation and going with this one better understanding of the gospel and this should become our life pattern as francis of assisi has said it i must you must we must as he must live as per the pattern this is a love pattern with a difference is what i said earlier love was there even before christ jesus came into this earth but love with a special dimension came from this man the second one is chapter 14 luke's gospel and also matthew's gospel chapter 25 verse number 40 but now i refer to luke's gospel chapter 14 jesus says like this if you love those who can return the love to you what great things you do even gentiles too that means these universal says others are also loving one another so love is not something a common love generic love but jesus love is specific very particular in a way challenging if not demanding what is it then he says if you love those who can love to you who can return the love to you what great things you do even gentiles too all do but if you love those who cannot would not may not return the love to you that i can call you are the with something special that means who are they the poorest the lay jesus word the leprosy patients crippled one way or other challenged today we use the word poorest of the poor this is popularized by mother teresa saying mother teresa Do you know why? Certainly you know it. She was trained and brought up by Jesuits. She came from a Jesuit par uh, parish, and she was her vocation was promoted by Jesuits. It is then she joined the original uh, one that is um, uh, Jesuit spirituality, Ignatian spirituality. But whereas in course of time, when she went over to found a new institute, Missionaries of Charity, she went by Franciscan spirituality. though she was brought up in ignatian spirituality when you meet her please ask she cannot deny the fact she was a jesuit product and she went by ignatian uh, uh, spirituality but in course of time when she wanted to touch the least and the last love the unloved under loved and those who were not able to return the love that may be slum dwellers in the context of mother teresa or again leprosy patients or abandoned seniors or uh, abandoned children newly born ones they were not able to return the love pair then she wrote the constitution got it approved in the year 1950 and the constitution clearly says franciscan spirituality very surprising notice it was written by a belgian jesuit by name van exam exam E X E M Van Exam. Mother Teresa died on the 5th of September 1997. This Belgian Jesuit died 
just three years before 1994. Once I went purposely to St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, when I had some other program, I dropped into St. Xavier's College just to meet this father, then exam. Was a spiritual uh, guide for Mother Teresa and on instruction by Mother Teresa, a Jesuit by name Van Exam wrote the constitution for MC sisters, brothers with touch of Franciscan spirituality. Van Exam seemed to have said, no, no, I know only English. No, no, you should be writing. Teresa commanded and Van Exam obeyed. He wrote Franciscan. It is there, I want to put it across to you. This is your special charism. And I don't need to know, I'll it further. But I have to now put it in such a way that you get it exactly. What is that one? Wherever you are, whatever ministry that you do, and whichever context you find yourself in, this retreat should give you that particular direction. Not that the direction is absent up to now. But you have to make a, what we call it, a very determined and discerned road map. Even among the people that you are working, and now you are uh, first and foremost, and you are uh, uh, concern and care, should reach out to those people who are unloved, underloved. This is a bit of sociological language. Loving the loved, not a great thing. Loving the overload is not at all expected. That is called pampering love. Even certain times the parents love also can be spoiling the very children. If the parents give everything and everything when the children ask, that means they are spoiling the child. That's called spoiled love or that is a, a pampering love, unjust. But loving the underloved, un unloved, who cannot return the love to you, Luke's Gospel chapter 14. Now I quote Matthew's Gospel chapter 25 verse number 14. If you really extend your hand of solidarity, love those, the least of your brothers and sisters, then you are done to me. Why? He gives another one. They belong to my family. You check in the Jerusalem Bible translation. Puts it this way. If you give to the least of your brothers and sisters who belong to my family, that means I belong to them, then you are done to me. My dear friends, uh, this is typically and tellingly Franciscan carry so. But however, in a retreat like this, when we need to challenge ourselves, Going by the invitation given by the constitution that we need to sharpen the focus. In the words of Stephen Covey, the famous book called Seven Habits of the Highly Effective People, we need to sharpen the saw. Because originally the saw was very sharp. In course of time, the sharpness is called blood. A retreat like this should be get back to the sharpening. Sharpen the saw. That means we have to know specifically we come into the focus. I repeat what I said a little earlier. This particular retreat should give you that road map. To, when you get back after the, at the end of the retreat, you have to make a kind of a special investigation, a special what we call a probe into the people uh, whom you are serving and then see whether you can cost you a lot with the, those people who are forgotten, underloved, unloved, pushed to the margins, both uh, historically and structurally. Structurally. Thereby, we go by the third value called love. And the love, as I repeat again, is first one is loving the wrongdoers. And the fourth highlight, I have already said it, loving the unloved, underloved. I now quote it, I am going to end the session. So, we started with that one, namely, we need to know the gospel, continuous progress in understanding. There, I have given four points. Justice, ten demands. Societal and cosmic put together, 10 dimensions. Second one is freedom, human rights. Both are born and born. Unborn, the fetus in the womb. The third one is love for the wrongdoers. And the fourth one is love for the underloved and unloved. For this one, we need to have uh, the grace. Look at the way I am putting the grace. The grace is nothing but this one. Not only reading the gospel, grace to read the gospel, grace to reflect over the gospel, but much more grace to 
realize the gospel in one's own life and one's own ministries before i end the session and my presentation i like to know ask your pardon for making this particular presentation bit heavy but i can't help it because many a time we say gospel gospel but the point is what's the gospel we need to know i tell you i am not a biblical scholar but as for the biblical scholarship these are the three values look at the way i'm going to connect it with our three vows because our three vows are nothing but evangelical councils evangelical evangelium gospel councils values going along with the justice the vow called obedience obey the truth obey justice and obey righteousness stand by it come what may that's what justice obedience second freedom shall i tell you that is chastity you are free to get married there's a sacrament of matrimony is available i am free to remain single but at the same time free to voluntarily offer our sexuality on for god's mission freedom 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 we could have channelized our uh, sexuality in different ways but we made use of our own freedom in order to offer that particular capacity ability potency for the vibrancy of god's mission and for the gospel mission of jesus the third one is love i have explained to you that is love for the unloved and underloved that's nothing but the what we call it the vow of poverty certainly you know my dear friends that uh, i have to also i like that one before closing my session why it is there i like the way in, uh, francis of assisi put it he calls everybody as brothers and sisters as a seniors and what not as mother and what not but when it comes to poverty goes along with the value of love he puts poverty is my lover you know it i know it we know it he has some lovers at is the others who were loving him including claire but he want to make it very clean and clear and claire is not my lover poverty is my lover lady poverty beloved poverty and you know it as for the original mind of francis of assisi he wanted to take only one vow that is poverty but not permitted by vatican why three vows correspond to the three values of the gospel evangelical councils so francis would have been told either you take all the three vows going by three values of the gospel or you forget about the foundation he surrendered he took three and the three were so today when you go for your thing one thing to understand the gospels second one is how much you stand by your vows here are three values justice freedom love here are three vows obedience chastity power and thereby make this day a very very prayerful at the same time very very contemplative in terms of checking the court of your conscience where you stand by gospel values where you stand by the consecrated vows i wish you all the best and we are like to end the session with the same words with which i began i end the session with the same words with which i began it is put there page number 42 sorry 41 since we are the sons of francis we commit ourselves under the guidance of the holy spirit to make continuous progress in understanding the gospel and living the gospel as the fifth gospel may god bless you bless me bless Sometimes I'm